Thank you very much for, uh, for being there. Uh, you can see our vision there. Uh, we are a TCR developing company with two major characteristics. Uh, one is uh, that we target uh, uh, driver antigens with an MHC class two uh, TCR uh, portfolio, uh, hoping to have a superior response. And I'll come back to that later on. But we also have a TCR-based allogeneic approach using NK cells uh, to broaden the therapeutic options. Our leading asset uh, should be in the clinic next year, and it's targeting HTERT uh, with a broad opportunity in uh, patient population in uh, solid cancers. Now, we have a, an international team that kind of a fraction of it commutes to Norway. Uh, others reside there, but we all are, have extensive biotechnology and cell therapy experience and committed to the project that we have in hands. And what is that project? What is the value proposition that we bring? Now, we all know that uh, uh, solid tumors remain an unmet medical need. We all know the challenges of CAR, uh, T in solid tumors, and we know the promise of TCRs uh, because of the antigen, because of the mechanism of action. Nevertheless, we still do not have those responses that we would like to have with TCRs, and we believe that potentially a, an MHC class two with a broader mechanism of action may have an opportunity in that context of the solid tumors. And we want, in addition to that, to take that opportunity and expand it to an allogeneic platform using an NK-based TCR approach. For that, we have two sides of our portfolio, an autologous, with the leading asset, as I mentioned to you, going to the clinic next year, targeting a reduced basket, and I'll come back to the details about the study, um, including a non-small cell lung cancer melanoma, renal cell carcinoma, pancreatic, and a biomarker group. We have several other class two um, in, the, in the portfolio, and we're using those TCRs also in, uh, in an allogeneic approach, which is currently at an early preclinical stage. I don't need to elaborate about this. You know also what it is uh, that we're talking about but I would like to reflect on what has already been said here before, which is the opportunity of the TCR versus the CAR in terms of ability to penetrate, ability to have a more supple interaction with the antigen. Um, interestingly enough, there was a, 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 an article in New Yorker by Siddhartha Mukherjee saying that the TCR sniffs the antigen like the dog sniffs his target. Uh, and that actually reflects very well that sub subtle interaction. In addition to that, he can see a lot more antigens uh, than the car can. So there is a significant higher potential for solid tumors with TCRs, and we know the mechanism, the mechanism of antigen recognition, the mechanism of direct killing, primary CD8, and the mechanism of mastering not only a direct hit, but above all, a compound immune response by mastering other cells through the MHC class two CD4 uh, uh, targeting mechanism. That has led to a lot of work, and here is just a, a capture of a series of published uh, papers on, on TCRs, which I think the message, and we can debate that, is there's acceptable safety, uh, and there is a proof of efficacy. A proof of efficacy that potentially is beyond expectations, but nevertheless, it is, it is there, and we, know, we, and we know that some, pro some of these products are close to reaching the clinic. Should I point out that all of those are class two, uh, one, except uh, a class two that actually is taken up and currently being developed by Kite. So what are our propositions? How are we addressing some of the challenges in the TCRT therapy? One is the efficacy, and we believe the MHC class two, by mastering a broad mechanism of action with a adoptive, together an innate mechanism of action, uh, gives us an opportunity beyond what we currently have. 
The durability of response in terms of the antigen that we're targeting, driver antigens that are antigens difficult for the cells to escape, as well as other cells like the macrophage we heard before and the epitope spread, which has been documented, which brings us closer to that DRIM adoptive TIL through a single uh, T uh, cell TCR MHC class two. And the distribution of that MHC class two also gives us an additional opportunities in terms of safety, since unlike class one, it is restricted to a certain number of cells. The target that we have, H-tert and mutated, is what keeps the cells in terms of immortality. And so it's difficult for the cancer cells to give it away, coupled with a quietly prevalent HLA DPV-104, uh, provides a very attractive and, uh, as I said, large patient, target patient population target. We have a set of supporting data that I'll show you in a minute that actually shows the high sensitivity as well as the physiological functionality of, uh, of, um, of, of the cells. And the TCR that we have comes from immunized patients. In other words, it has been it's just circulated and has gone through timing selection, giving us some safety reassurance to be confirmed and, and discussed in the preclinical data that, that, that we have. But it was also associated with a, uh, a long-term immune response and, and a benefit. Uh, and coupled with, again, preclinical data on efficacy that we have, gives us some, some reassurance of the potential that he, that he has. That, together with um, the broad prevalence of the age third gives us a target patient population that is quite significant, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's really quite a, a, an attractive proposition. Just to take one step uh, in terms of the data, uh, if, I, if I guide you through the, this way, you can see here, I mentioned that the, the TCR came from a patient that had been immunized. It was a pancreatic cancer patient whom, from, from whom we still have ascites cancer cells. And we've been able to document not only the killing with the original clone from the patient, but also the killing with another donor, HLA matched, TCR H H3 transduced with, against the antigen. And as you can see, we've documented physiological in vitro killing. I also have a film and I also won't show it. Uh, but we, there's a fur, furry test tube with the limitations that an animal model shows in terms of being able to have in vivo killing and antigen sensitivity down to nanomolar and no evidence so far of alloreactivity or of tumor effect. So we're going to take this into the clinic and we're going to do, as I said, a basket with uh, uh, a, so low, some low-hanging fruits like melanoma, uh, but some high-hanging fruits like pancreatic. Do having documented that these tumors that I mentioned to you have high uh, uh, prevalence of class two uh, in, uh, uh, documented in, in a series of, uh, of patients, as well as high prevalence of h -tert. But, oops, sorry. Uh, but what we're also going to do is going to have one arm where patients, any a patient with a solid tumor that is h -tert expressing and can be accessible to biopsy, we'll have biopsy before and after, because we want, in addition to have the clinical effect, have the mechanistic assessment of this h targeting and this MHC class II uh, broad immune mechanism uh, effect. Now, I want to delay, uh, elaborate further on that, just to tell you that uh, we've been concentrating significant efforts on developing a proprietary uh, 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 manufacturing process by, through a DOE design of experiment with multiple small runs and varying the concentrations of the cytokines and other factors so that we are able to obtain a phenotype for persistence and functionality. Uh, again, aiming at not really just having transduced cells, but having transduced cells with a function that we would like, uh, they would like to see. And we've done that in partnership with, uh, with a CDMO and a, and a virus producing that you can see there. Cool. So that's the, auto the autologous. Let me just tell you about the Ologenic. I don't need to sell you the advantages in terms of clinical simplicity, readiness of availability, 
cost and above a manufacturing consistency. Um, but I would like to remind you of the opportunity of using NK cells, and I'm sure some of you and, and the audience know these better than I do, in terms of being a potent effector cell, having an allogeneic potential, and having been used in targeting ways, namely with CAR, in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in other approaches. So we want to take that, and based on data that we have and published, and, and, and patent submitted, we have documented that NK cells, uh, cell line in fact uh, of, uh, on these experiments uh, can be functional uh, and can be targeted transduced with CD3 and TCR. Uh, just a, a snapshot of the data that, uh, that is part of the paper that you can see that you can see there. That has led us to um, uh, uh, engage on an industrial partnership uh, which uh, we're aiming to uh, establish so that we can have a short-term uh, uh, allogeneic TCRNK product onto the market. And behind that, with the protection that we have for the, for the platform, have additional partnering opportunities and really further that, that platform. That partnership is, is, is starting and a feasibility study that aims at repeating with different NK cells, the data that we've already shown you before, is, is ongoing. So, just a quick positioning. A lot of companies are on TCRs. Only a couple, even though there are academic centers like Roswell Park, have recently announced exploring a MHC class two uh, TCR approach. On the allogeneic approaches, there's multiple ways in terms of gene editing these cells, as well as the cells that can be used in allogeneic way. In the context of TCRNK, only in vitro documented so far anyway, uh, we are, uh, um, by virtue of the protection that we have, alone. So, what have we been doing and what we aim to do? I'm on time. Uh, we have been establishing, really, the team, the manufacturing, the preclinical data. We have gone through regulatory validation of our manufacturing preclinical data and also clinical proposition. And, uh, and we aim at starting the Zolid, that is actually a cool name, right? Uh, for a company that starts with Z and uh, aims at solid tumors, just in case you didn't understand. Um, um, we're starting the study next year, having a, an initial readout um, by, by the end of 2021 and getting an asset, an allogeneic asset behind that, ready to go into the clinic uh, just as, as the time uh, we get the initial clinical readout from the first study. And in addition to that, expand the portfolio and have strategic options towards a more and more in-house manufacturing perspective. So with all that, we believe that we have a good team, a fantastic team with cell therapy experience. We have a differentiated position in our uh, approach with MHC class two, uh, and we're able to go onto an allogenic uh, approach. Uh, we're aiming at delivering value uh, to patients with solid cancers, and we will have, uh, we hope and we believe, and, uh, and the project so, so tells us, delivering significant inflection points over the next uh, few years. Um, and with that, I thank you.